Open fermentation involves fermenting beer in an unsealed vessel where the top is exposed to the environment, and given its wide surface area, I figured my bathtub would make for a great fermentation vessel. So I'm brewing a German Hefeweizen, pouring it into my tub, and watching the magic of fermentation unfold. Then, without telling him how it was brewed, I'm serving the beer to my poor, unsuspecting father. I think it's time to confess something. Ah. And to talk me through this, I had the help of the man who literally wrote the book on how to brew John Palmer. I'm Martin Keane and this is The Brewlosophy Show. So I do have to ask, is this a stupid idea? Is this crazy doing the fermentation in the bathtub? I I would... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so welcome to my bathroom. I think the first question I have about this bathtub is how much beer do I need to make to make sure that it's covered and probably a few inches deep. Let's add some water and find out. Okay, first observation, obvious, but I didn't really think about it. The bathtub's not flat. There's a deep section and a shallow section. That's how it drains. Basically two inches, more or less, in the deep end. And about one inch in the shallow end. I don't think that's really deep enough. Let's put another five gallons in. Okay, this is hard to see on camera, but in the deep end here, we're about three inches submerged. In the shallow end, about two inches. Now, open fermentation doesn't need to be particularly deep. In fact, the shallower it is, the more surface area you're going to have. Therefore, the yeast has more opportunity to put in the oxygen and whatever else it needs. So, I um, guess I'm making a 10 gallon batch. Would that be deep enough? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it will ferment quickly at that ratio because of the amount of oxygen exposure, right? amount of oxygen exposure, um, the amount of reproduction of the yeast that will be able to occur over that. You may end up with too much fermentation character if it ferments too fast. It should work. So it looks like I'm gonna need the big boy and brew a 10 gallon batch. Let's get the grains in. Now, what have I got in here? Well, I am using the same recipe that I used before for Hefeweizen. And it's pretty simple. So it's 50% Pilsner malt. I'm using modern Pilsner from Epiphany Craft Malts. And then the other 50% is wheat malt. And uh, in a batch this size, it's just 10 pounds each. Oh, and uh, I realized I didn't have my water salts yet. So um, I don't have very much, just a touch of gypsum and epsom salt, and then a couple of grams of calcium chloride. Um, is it okay to put it over top of the mash? I'll have to do. Right, that's stirring nicely now. So I'm gonna mash this at 153 Fahrenheit. That's around 67 Celsius. And I'm gonna do that for an hour, which will give me plenty of time to get the bathtub ready. So I switched out those 2700 Kelvin soft white light bulbs for something a bit brighter. This looks a bit more food friendly in here. I also removed the shower curtain. So how do I get this bathtub clean, sanitary, and ready to receive wort. Well, I'm just gonna treat it like any other fermentation vessel. So first of all, I'm gonna give it some PBW and let that sit in warm water for a bit. Give that a scrub, then add some star sand to sanitize it and let that drain out. Close off the, the air vent. Closed. The activity, the pH, all of that keeps it fairly inhospitable to most bacteria, but you could get a Britannomyces bug going in there, you know, from elsewhere in the house. If, it, if you get air blowing on it from, you know, through the system. This is gonna be a 30 minute boil, just like last time. Two hop additions, I've got Magnum as the 30 minute addition. 10 grams of this. With 15 minutes left in the boil, that's when I'm going to add Halatau Middlefra. I have 28 grams of this, and this will give a total of around 13 IBU in the beer. After adding that second hop addition and completing the boil, I chilled the wort using my counterflow chiller and transferred it to a sanitized pot. Uh, some of it, anyway. And then dumped in vigorously into the bathtub. How's that for oxygenating the word? So here I have my nearly 10 gallons of uh, 
of words. This is not a smell you normally get in the bath. It's so weird how malty it is. Came in at 10.51 OG. So last thing to do is to add the yeast. Now I made a yeast starter for this. I wanted to make sure that the yeast was in absolute best condition. And also I'm only using one packet of yeast um, because I'm using 10 gallons of wort. I really needed a starter for that. So this is ready to go. This is the Vites the Feynman yeast strain. Now I'm just gonna pour it into my bucket. And now to let it ferment. You've got to watch it, and as soon as that main fermentation is done, you want to figure out a way to transfer and get it into a keg. I pressure transfer everything so I didn't have an auto siphon. I do now. This will allow me to get the beer out of the bar. Here's the keg I'm using, and I've made a modification to this. And that modification is a floating dip tube. Why am I using a floating dip tube? Well, unlike my closed fermentations where I just moved the finished beer into the package, into the keg, this time I'm going to be taking the beer out of the bathtub before fermentation is complete. That means there is going to be some fermentation happening in this keg. There's going to be true at the bottom of it that could block up a regular dip tube. High Croizen, you know, you're going to have an inch or two of yeast foam on top. When you see that starting to start decreasing and it's fallen by say half of its height, you know, you don't, you're not getting the sharp CO2 smell off the top now. Yeah, activity is declining. It's time to get it away from oxygen. If, if you're really trying to make that beer as, be as good as it can be. Which of course I am. So time to get into this sanitized keg. Well, I've got most of one keg's worth out of that. I think that's gonna be enough for this experiment. With the beer safely in the keg, I took a gravity reading to see that it had dropped down to 1.011, indicating fermentation was basically complete. Even so, I hooked the keg up to an airlock for maturation. Then after cold crashing and forced carbonating, the beer was ready to serve to my unsuspecting father. So I'll tell you this, uh, I'll tell you what style it is. Yeah. It's a uh, German wheat beer, Hefeweizen. The style of Hefeweizen, typically creamy white head and a bit of a cloudy color, golden color. It's Which pretty is much good there. so far, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, very cloudy, you can't see through it at all. Oh, that's true. So it looks the part. It certainly does, yeah. You will either get sort of a banana-y sort of well, ester or a clovey ester from it. I was gonna say banana, I was expecting wheat, I think. A very ripe banana. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Kind of yeah. a almost overly ripe yes. banana flavor. Yeah. And yeah. quite strong, right? Very quite strong, a, yeah. Quite a strong yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. with the, the head that's on here. Yeah. Yeah. So we got we the taste. taste. Yeah. Doesn't taste banana. I'd say it was more orange. Orangey, getting a bit of orange yeah. notes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm picking up a little bit of that as well. Maybe like orange peel, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's not as... I don't know what the word... When I've tried some of your wheat beers before, they've been quite... Well, more of a hoppy flavor, I think. Yes. And this is less so. That's right. And there's very little hops in this. So I'm not surprised right. you're not picking up much on that. Is this still sort of a drinkable beer? Well, I think or? this is more of, of a wheat beer. This is a beer that I'd be happy to drink. Not too many of, but one or two, but that's nice. I mean, I like this, whereas a lot of wheat beers, I'd say, I don't really like. Right. So right. this is an easier drinking wheat beer, I think. Well, for my taste anyway. So I think it's time to confess something. Ah, This beer was made in a somewhat unusual fashion. My parents are staying in, in the basement here. There's a spare bedroom and bathroom and whatnot. This beer was actually made in the bathroom of the basement. And oh. specifically in the bathtub. Straight in the bathtub? Straight in the bathtub. Like two days before you arrived, it had beer in it. My morning shower will never feel the same again, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one more surprise for you. Which is? So, when I was doing the homebrew challenge, you know, I went through and I brewed every beer style. Yeah. And at one point I got to the English section and I brewed a bunch of the English beers. My idea was that I would put some in bottles for you. That was in 2019. Then you couldn't come over because you guys live in Australia and COVID. Oh, yeah. This was my gift to you from 
now four years ago. <laughs> well, thank you. Well matured. Huh? Wow, well, thank you very much. So in here is every style of British beer that I brewed. Oh, Scottish export, English IPA, and oh. it's <laughs> literally... And this is still going to be good, do you think, after? You tell me. Well, thank you very much. That's really lovely. <laughs>